This is what my hair used to look like when it was relaxed, and I loved it. And this is what my hair looks like now, and I still love it. But it didn't start that way, so make sure you watch this video before you go natural. If you're watching this video, it means you are either thinking of going natural, you just went natural and you're not sure about your decision, or you need a final push in one direction or the other to either stay relaxed or color treated or whatever, or fully go natural and take the plunge. So I have about five points and a bonus, so you want to make sure that you listen to all of them because they are all exactly what you need. And this will be the video I wish that I found before I went natural. My name is Angelica. I post videos twice a week, every Thursdays and Sundays, all about growing long, healthy hair. And on Fridays, I post a fun video that might be anything that you guys request. This Friday's video is a video all about Bridgerton and a get ready with me. So I show you exactly how I lay this exact wig and the makeup that I'm wearing so if you're interested in knowing how I did that or listen to my opinions about the first episode of Bridgerton you can check that video out I'll link it at the end of this video but for now let's get into it okay so the first and important thing that you need to do before you go natural is something mental you need to ask yourself why you want to go natural is it because it's from pressure from other people your friends your family members youtubers like myself is it because there's a new craze and everybody's supposed to be going natural and loving their natural hair and embracing it and whatever is that why you're going natural you have to ask yourself the actual reason why you're going natural are you going natural because maybe you think that your relaxed or color treated hair has been getting so severely damaged that you feel like the only way to treat it is to go natural is it because you feel like the only way to grow long hair is to go natural? Is it because you just want to try something new or is it because you want to embrace your natural curls? Maybe you've never seen what your curl pattern looks like and you just want to experience that. Find the actual reason and make sure that you're doing it for a reason that you actually want. It should be your decision and not from peer pressure or anything like that because trust me, you will regret it if you do it for someone else. Please do it for yourself. Let's get to the second thing you need to know before you go natural. Okay, so this is something that I wish someone told me or that I just knew, and this is the second you go natural, most of the time it's not what you expect and you have to be prepared for that. It's either your hair might be thinner than you thought or it might be so thick that you don't know how to manage it it might be that you don't like your natural curl pattern and you feel like uh, maybe I made a mistake, I actually don't like this natural pattern. Or maybe the curl pattern of your hair is completely different to what you actually imagined on your hair. Because maybe you've never seen your curl pattern and you watched other people's videos like I did and I thought, hmm, I think maybe my hair looks like that. No, I think maybe my hair looks like that person. And then you see your own curl pattern and it's completely not like the videos you watched. So now you don't know what to do with it. I had relaxed hair since I was six or seven years old and I had no idea what my natural curl pattern actually looked like because whenever my hair was actually out it was either in a blow-dried state or it was in some kind of braids or twists or something like that so when my hair was like natural in any picture I've seen I literally saw zero curl pattern so I had no idea what to expect I could only project from other videos that I was watching so it's definitely an adjustment whatever hair you deal with unless you've maybe had natural hair for most of your life and then you relax it and you're deciding to go back to natural then you probably be in a better position than anyone who was in a position like I was now here's a specific thing that I don't hear a lot of youtubers say and I think that it should be said so I'm going to say it there's a very high chance, or maybe not a high chance, but there's a chance that you might not like your curl pattern. You might not like what your hair looks like when you go natural, and you might want to go back immediately into a protective style like braids or twists or relax your hair again. And that is totally fine. It is your hair. It doesn't belong to anyone else. You can do whatever you want to your hair. And trust me, most of the time, the conceited people who like to push their opinions on other people will make you feel guilty and, they make, and they'll make it seem like they're doing it for your benefit. Like, no, don't relax your hair. I'm only doing this because I don't want your hair to get damaged. Like, I'm doing this because I'm doing a good thing for you. But if this person doesn't even know you, they don't know anything about you, they don't care about you, and the only thing they want you to do is not relax relax your hair, they're just projecting their own feelings of their own hair onto your hair. So for you, you might not feel any kind of oppression, you might not feel any pressure with your hair, you just specifically like it a certain way and it being natural is not the way you like it. Please, if you needed someone to tell you, feel free to go back and relax your hair. Go back and relax your hair, it is your own hair, it is just hair and you have the right to do whatever you want to do with your own hair. Because it is, what did I say? Your own hair. 
let's get to the third thing you need to know before you go natural. Before you go natural, you need to be open-minded. This is another mind thing. A lot of it is mental because going natural is very easy. All you need to do is pick up the scissors and cut the hair off and then bam, you're natural. What you really need to be prepared for is most of the mental stuff before and after. So when you go into it, you have to be open-minded. Like I said, there's a chance you might not like the curl pattern, but let's say you say, hmm, you know, I don't like this curl pattern, but I still wanna be natural. You need to find ways, try different ways to style your hair, style your hair. And if you're not comfortable with it, there are so many protective styles that you could do while your hair is in an awkward length, because even if your hair is relaxed and straight in the perfect state that you like it, maybe in a bleach blonde state, whatever state you like it in, it might be the length that's kind of awkward for you and you don't know what to do with your hair since you just cut it off. I would suggest protective styling, but protective styles that are actually protective, not just styles that look like they're protective styles, but they don't do anything. No, you need protective styles that will actually help your hair grow, help you retain length. And I do have a bunch of videos on this, so I will link them at the end of the video. But but what I would suggest are cornrows, like what I have under this wig right now, box braids with braids that are not too heavy so they don't weigh your new shorter hair down. Um, don't braid your hair too tight. Don't do micro braids, micro twists. Don't do Havana twists. So yeah, it might seem like your options are a little bit limited, but also head wraps are another good way to go because all you need to do is moisturize your hair the best way you can depending on the length that it is and then just throw on your head wrap. I have a bunch of videos on that as well. And you'll be good to go until your hair reaches a length where you feel like you want to maybe manipulate it a little more, try out a couple more hair hairstyles and also if you're not going natural for the purpose of growing longer hair or healthy hair you have way more freedom because you can cut your hair shorter you could experiment with the heat you could experiment with bleach sometimes people go natural because maybe you want to make you want to wear your hair straight more often and you feel like relaxing your hair and then straightening it causes so much damage which it actually does so if you want to wear straight hair all the time sometimes you even get much more volume and it looks nice and smooth if you learn how to do it properly and you could be a straight natural someone might say well what was the point of going natural if you're going to straighten your hair all the time you can have straight hair that's still healthy sure it won't be as healthy as hair that has never ha had any heat or bleach or dye added to it but it can still be healthy so if you want to wear your hair more straight more often, it's actually a good idea to go natural because there is a higher chance of your hair growing longer because you're not adding chemicals, breaking down the protein bonds to make your hair straight, and then going over with a straightener. If you just straighten it, you might see that your hair just looks much more luscious and full, so that's actually a good idea. So just be open-minded and know, like I said, the reason. If you're doing it for fun, you want to go back to your natural texture, whatever your reason is, that is fine, but if you're doing it for length and health and stuff, you might want to invest more into the protective styling route if you decide that the only reason you're going natural in this case like you're deciding okay i'm gonna go natural and this is what's gonna happen if the only reason is because you want longer healthier hair you need to look at the patterns that you had with your relaxed hair because if you bring the exact same patterns you had with your relaxed hair or bleached hair onto your fully natural hair you have the same problem you might say well everyone told me if i cut my hair and go natural then it's going to grow long but if you have the same bad habits you experience the same problems. If you don't know how to detangle your hair, if you don't deep condition, if you don't moisturize properly, if you don't do protective styles in the proper way, whatever issues you had with your relaxed hair, all the bad habits you had, you bring them onto your natural hair. It might just take a couple weeks longer for you to see the damage, but you still experience the same damage. You will not have longer hair. You will not have thicker, healthier hair. It'll just be a different texture than the hair that you had before and there'll be no change and you'll be very disappointed because you might start to think, I cut my hair so that it can grow longer and now I'm in the same position so basically I cut my hair for nothing. Okay, so this is another one you need to be heavily prepared for because I think I was pretty prepared for this but I still fell into the trap and this is before you go natural, know that there's going to be an abundance and an overwhelming amount of products and DIYs and things you can do to your natural hair to make it grow faster, to make it look a certain way, to make it curl a certain way. And know that you don't have to do everything. All you need is a basic routine because you'll be overwhelmed and you're not going to know what to do with yourself. You're just going to be so overwhelmed like, oh my God, should I use a pre-poo? Should I use a deep conditioner? There's so many deep conditioners. There's literally so much of every single thing starting from products that you can buy to actual DIYs. So don't feel the pressure to use everything at once. All you need is a basic routine and that is, I wrote it down, a shampoo, a conditioner, a deep conditioner, a moisturizer, and an oil. Five products are the things that you mainly need. And once you get your routine down packed, 
a routine is really what's the key, the secret to growing long, healthy hair. Because if you have all the best products in the world and the best practices, but you do them once in a while and you don't actually have a routine, you're not actually going to see good benefits come from it. So you have to have a set routine and start with the smallest amount of products that you can have. Then when you get used to your hair and you start to know what your hair feels like it needs, then you can start adding a few things like maybe a protein treatment. If you want to try DIYs, you could try maybe an avocado mask uh rice water those are my favorite diys and i always say this diys are pretty unstable because just because it's natural doesn't mean it's not a chemical compound even our bodies are made up of chemicals so you want to make sure that if you're going to do diys please try and test them out like one at a time and like maybe every two weeks don't do a different diy every week because you won't even know what's working you could do maybe rice water one week skip a week in between then try an avocado mask another time if you want to try like a clay mask depending on what kind of hair you have whatever you have to do just try them out at separate times i know people are always like oh maybe i can make a huge concoction like everyone says clay is nice and they say that an apple cider vinegar rinse is good. They also say that avocado masks are good and rice water and onion juice. So can I mix like onion juice and rice water and mix it up with an avocado mask? There's a high chance that it's actually not going to work well because not all ingredients work well together. So please just try and not be so overwhelmed and then set yourself out if you need to write it down and figure out how you're going to try these things out you can do it and then once you find something that works stick to it for as long as you can of course we want to have fun and experiment with different things and you can do that but still find something that works so that in case anything goes wrong at, at any point you know exactly what to go back to to get back to a good place with your hair before you go natural know that Everyone's journey is different. You can be inspired by so many naturals on YouTube, whether it be me, whether it be tons of other natural hair gurus, you know, the Glam Twins, Amber Ansa, Mercy Gono, whoever it is who's like your hair crush out there, whoever it is, if you watch their channels and you feel like, I want my hair to be like that. Oh my God, this person's hair grew so fast in one year. I'm going to do exactly what she did and I'm going to get the exact same results. Honestly, everybody's hair is different and everybody's journey is different. So you might get demoralized or you might think hmm maybe this person didn't know exactly what she was talking about because I did this and my hair grew way faster than hers and there's a chance that maybe you did everything exactly what she was doing but your hair is just different maybe your hair just grows faster or you might say I did exactly what this person does and my hair is still fine it's not as thick as this person it's not as long as this person and maybe your hair just kind of grows slower or maybe you just you know, you have to know that you have your own journey. Even if you watch all those YouTubers and you compare them to each other, they also all have their own separate journeys. So you need to know that although sometimes you can be envious, you can might you might project someone else's journey onto yourself and hope that happens to you. Anyone can do that. We all envy other people and we all want like, oh my God, I want my hair to be tailbone length. I want my hair to be mid back length. I want it to be this long. If it could just touch my shoulders, like, you know, we all have those dreams and those wishes. And of course you can always plan for that. And so you can implement everything that you can and work as hard to get to your goal, but don't expect to get there at the same time as someone else, because there's so many different factors that go into what goes what makes their hair grow that fast or thick or strong or shiny or anything like that. Now, if you're in this place and you're like, hmm, I think I made the right decision. I think I decided to go natural for the right reasons. I think I'm doing this right. Or you're like, you know what? Like, I feel good about staying relaxed or going back to relaxed. There's a YouTuber called You Love Megs. I think that's her YouTube handle. She was relaxed and she had long, healthy, relaxed hair. And I used to watch her channel when I was relaxed. Then she cut off all her hair. She went natural. And now, she was like, you know what? Natural hair just wasn't doing it for me. And then she's gone back to relax. Now imagine if she was like your hair crush, your hair idol, and you went natural at the same time as her. And now you still have natural hair and you're mad. Like I went natural because of you. And now you've relaxed your hair again. And what am I supposed to do? Honestly, that is not her problem because you decided to copy her and go natural and then go back to relax or not. So that's why I'm saying make sure it's always up to you. And now if you've just gone natural and you want tips on how to actually grow your hair and you're a little confused and stuck i have tons of videos of those so make sure you hit my face right there to subscribe and hit the bell right down there if you didn't hit it at the beginning because i always post videos about lots of healthy hair tips and you can watch the videos on the side of the screen right here for some of those tips if you want let me know if you enjoyed this by giving this video a big thumbs up i'll hope to see you in my next video thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next one bye